Hello TM Krishna welcome to Film Companion South I'm not I'm not sure how to describe you because we are a film based channel and I'm trying to get some connection you you're refusing to sing film songs <laughs> no, I'm not refusing to sing film songs I thought you had this big policy that you won't sing No I sang for uh, Gypsy right Oh right okay yeah, now yeah. I so I have okay. no policy that I will not sing for film okay, songs okay. absolutely not Okay so so I thought maybe I should begin by asking some completely non controversial question like are you a vijay fan or an ajit fan or something oh like that oh god no i am a vijay sethupathi fan okay great okay cool. <laughs> so now we now that's out of the way we can get into the real conversation so the the purpose of calling you here krishna is to basically uh, now i've known you for a while and i've known you since the time you were a kacheri you know singer like a regular carnatic singer yeah. and there's been a big 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 transformation in the way you not just approach your art but something about the way you lead your life the way yeah. the your concerns your your uh, you know things so i thought it would be it would be interesting to get into your headspace and see how an artist has evolved right i mean and this is across all art it's not i don't think it's true. specific to just carnatic music Absolutely. of course you represent carnatic music but it's it's true of all of all artists of course, so of course. when i interviewed you in 2006 uh, i said what do you do to ensure you don't stagnate and that you keep evolving and this was your answer You said by challenging myself, maybe by singing a new raga, or maybe by starting a raga at an unexpected place and seeing where it leads me. Otherwise, the best way to keep yourself fresh is by learning more compositions, and that's why I'm a student of Sita Rama Sharma. Why are you laughing, Krishna? <laughs> I'm just thinking about how frivolous that answer is. I have not even asked the question yet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you brought it up because it's good to be reminded of these things. But go ahead. What's your question? Right. This is the question is now today that question about if I ask you the same question, how do you keep not stagnating? How do you keep evolving? Uh, I would be asking this a very different Krishna because you're a very politically engaged writer. Your music you've taken into various parts of non Carnatic music areas. What the areas that are that are beyond what are traditionally considered Carnatic music areas. And in your book Sebastian and Sons, the recent one that came out, uh, you actually delve into the lives of the Dalit Christians that uh, were the makers of the mridangam, the the percussion instruments. So, at what point, Krishna, did you see yourself? transforming or beginning to change at what i'm not asking you for like like march 11 2012 not not something like that as i sat in the beach and watched the sunrise yeah said. whatever <laughs> no, but, but at what point did you did you see like that what you were doing was not enough that something needed to change so i i want to first actually respond to that quote because uh, i can understand the answer because it comes from uh, a person at that time and probably many people will still give you that answer yeah, sure. uh, from a person who sees his world as um that world of singing i'm not going to say even music that world of singing a specific form of music and when you say how do you it's like saying what kind of toolkits do i need to upgrade myself that's pretty precisely the answer i've given you in the sense if i don't stagnate meaning if i'm not repetitive that's what it means in my head what do i do so this is the toolkits i need i need to figure out uh, right. how to make more profits in my company i mean it's it's very similar right but what that answer completely uh, negates or doesn't even uh, realize is that that is still surface level development right okay yes you may sound beautiful your music may be great let's not even i'm not going to argue that right but what does it really mean for a raga to come alive or for your music to breathe right uh, that question doesn't deal with it because i didn't see a necessity to deal with it probably right so um, i think that's the transformation we are i i believe that's the transformation we are talking about so was there a moment uh, no varadva there was no moment but i do know there were you know things that happened when i sang that i could not explain it's going to sound absolutely vague and abstract but i think this is something all of us have experienced in whatever art we do or we we share space with or you watching a film anything right that something happens suddenly uh, in the process of art that you are not controlling consciously controlling right. the thing about the artist the artist always loves to be in control okay i want to know exactly what i'm moving where i'm moving how it's moving and the impact of that on the person who's receiving it right that's considered great art but in spite of all our great efforts to do that there are times when we lose that hold and we kind of also sitting and watching this 
Right. You know, almost like one of these films where you have this person coming out of their body and look, you know. And those are the, one of the most stunning moments of revealing something. Right. You know, I'm not making this esoteric. I'm not making this no, no, out no, of No, no, no. That makes complete sense what you're saying. Right? Because it's like sometimes you get this feeling that you are exiting your body and looking at yourself. When you write, you get that yeah, feeling too, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So the question is, what is that? Yeah. You know, I think that happened to me in concert. I still remember actually one instant very clearly in my head. It happened many times, but once I remember I was singing in Mailapur and I know the composition I was singing. I've never been a very religious person uh, to be emotionally taken over by it. And I was singing this Kirtana, Tyagaraja Kirtana, and I just broke down crying on stage. It happened before, but I remember this instant in my head. And before that, in that actual act of you crying or you being unable to sing, right. something's going on, right? Something so profoundly beautiful that you're like, oh my God, this is, this is just gorgeous. And it's not gorgeous because you're singing it, but it's also opening yourself to your own emotions in a way that does not happen usually, right? right. That sh stunned me. What stunned me was what I perceived as that contradiction of that incredible beauty. And the fact is that I was not controlling it, right? I think those, those were the first triggers for me to kind of turn around and look at the larger world. Because I felt in those moments there was something better about me. Right. As a person. You know, I can't explain this. Yeah. There was something better about yeah, me, you yeah. know, that I received in a way that I don't normally receive. Right. Bharadwaj says something, I've already judged you, I already believe this is correct, that is wrong. In that moment, I was not doing any of that. Right. So I think that somewhere that was the trigger for me to at least start reading, at least start seeing world beyond techniques beyond me being better performer, beyond me understanding more, you know, learning more compositions. Is there a way, I think there was an urge to try and breathe that space. Do right? you remember some of the stuff that you were reading at that point? So it's interesting how I began. So, I mean, you're still grappling when you have this, right? I'm much younger also. And uh, of course, at the same time, you want to be the superstar. I mean, that's not going to go away. It's not right. like that. That moment goes away. You go yes. back, go back and, home. And, and, and you uh, gave me an interview where <laughs> I, I knew you would bring that up. Yes, because you, you gave me the quote and you said, I'm a brand. Yes. You know, <laughs> that's one of my most unforgettable headlines of you. I have never forgotten that, by the way, because it keeps coming back to me. I sounded so much like an accountant and economist in that <laughs> interview than ever. But yeah, so that's also there, right? There, there are these, both these things are happening. You right. know, you can't, I can't just talk of this as some great transformation without realizing at the same time, I was avaricious. I wanted to be this superstar. I wanted to be known. I want to be written about, etc, etc. So then you're like, at the same time, you're like, okay, what's then what is this? Uh, what am I doing? Like, you right. know, what am I singing? You know, what is this music? You're asking all these very foundational questions. So interestingly for me, I started my first point of searching was to try and go backwards and say, where does this music come from? Right. Right. So I, uh, my good friend Sri Ram Kumar was a violinist, a well-known violinist, a composer. He's a kind of a multifaceted human being. Uh, we started like going, uh, looking at tree ties and I had many scholars who were willing to help me. So I started looking at multiple treatises and saying, okay, where did this raga come from? We say we should sing it this way. This is the rule that, you know, this phrase, we are singing something that is so old. This oldness started bothering me. Right. Right. Is it old? Is it new? What is this music? You know, am I just another thing about, you know, am I just, just another singer in this whole ocean of greatness? You know, so I think that my first search was inward into the art form itself which is the southern uh, southern music and that resulted in the southern music and that meant but interestingly that whole research also meant i was uh, being critical about this environment that slowly right. i realized that i was being critical about this environment and saying does the music exist in spite of the environment right uh, how does and then you we're all grappling with this right the beauty and the ugly are always constantly together right. and and in that little fissure in that little issue is where something magical also happens, right? right? The contestation. So I was, I think those, that process is how I moved. So, because I remember in the book itself, there were quite a few controversial things that you'd said, at least not controversial, at least controversial in terms of how Carnatic concerts are Correct. typically done. For example, you said that uh, the tukadas that are sung at the end of a concert to so I mean supposedly to leave the audience in a light mood why do what is this we are not a circus act you know yeah. why do we need yeah. to uh, yeah. uh, you know do that or i think you also questioned the 
the importance of certain ragas i forget the name maybe deva manohar uh, ragas that are based on skills, skills. rather than uh, yeah, yeah. rather than organically evolved yeah, yes so you so you quite you created a lot of conversation around the art form itself but what i'm saying is where did the social consciousness come from before that let me ask you this you're a very politically engaged uh, person on twitter uh, when you were younger when you were in college uh, would you talk about this with your friends and stuff like that would you like about politics and about caste or about the people around us or oh no way i was just uh, just stinking privileged that's probably the best way to put it yeah absolutely uh, whether it you know i really i mean it's not like caste was like even in my mind i was like anybody else saying what caste we don't discuss caste at home so caste doesn't exist you yeah. know i mean that's that's yeah. and and it's interesting my home is this progressive uh, so it's important to place that right i can't, i don't come from a conservative background right. i come from this progressive very cosmopolitan english right. speaking and your mother is the best example so yeah, yeah you know but it doesn't mean there was still, it's important to recognize that in spite of that there are certain things that remain blind because yeah. of the habituation yeah. of where you are right but at the same time it is a home that all is encouraged questioning uh you know where we could debate and argue so that culture of not being satisfied with just some answer right. was there i right. mean that's that i think was the wonderful part of it right right so now you know you you made a point of saying where did the social con- you know awareness i think it came from southern music the book itself okay. if you look at the book if the book also talks about caste right in a very frontal way it talks about gender it talks about i think discovering the caste issues within myself and within the world i occupied was the first time i was actually being political right in a progressive sense i'm always political i mean everybody is always political in whatever sense but otherwise so i think that is the first time that i started seeing that there is an othering that this world does right that there is a these invisible screens invisible glasses right. this this you know which nobody speaks about and everybody says this is this wonderful world that we occupy this uh, almost presumption of this hoity toityness of the art form that you know everybody cannot understand it right. you know all these things it's something like it's just ingrained and all this is othering right all this is a way of saying all you people stay away yeah right in different ways yeah. culturally intellectually emotionally psychologically politically you know socially right. we are saying this for, i think my work towards that book the book was accidental i was working i was just reading and trying to understand over past se- over seven years it so happened uh, that hapa collins wrote to me and said would you be interested mm-hmm. but the book helped because i had all these scattered things all over my head the book allowed me to actually bring them together in some kind of a cohesive manner like organized definitely yeah. and i think that's when i mean if you want to pick a moment i'll pick the phase when i started putting all that together in an in in a personal narrative right uh, that i started asking more difficult questions of it. in fact i probably would dis- disagree with some things i've said in the book today you right. know we i wasn't thinking should we do another edition you know right. asking but there are things in that i'll i'll probably add more nuance to right add little more layerings to but i think that's that's part of life right that's that, going to always is, happen which is why i feel you shouldn't you know laugh or be too hard on yourself for the answer <laughs> that you gave for that question <laughs> long back because you know everyone grows right yeah, it's like at that point you were that person absolutely absolutely and, and you know what can you say I yeah, mean, that, yeah. And, you know that's true but i just found it funny okay <laughs> <laughs> One of the most interesting things about a southern music is when you start talking about things like uh, can a non-Hindu or an atheist uh, belong to the world of Carnatic music, enjoy the music, or whatever it is. You're saying the book helped you deal with all these thoughts that that kind of were all over the place. That's what you were saying. Yes, I think it was a it it allowed me to um, ask these questions. Uh, I. You know most books are as much about the author as they are about the subject. Yeah. That's the truth whether it's fiction or non-fiction. Um I think you you tend to reflect the struggles that you're going through in what you write. Which is what is surprising about the book because when you bought something called a southern music and by one of the most accomplished practitioners of Carnatic music it it was a surprise to see the contents of the book because yeah. it was like not i thought it was going to be about the music itself exactly right yeah. so i think yeah it did help a lot i'm not saying that it gave me answers but at least it, i think it also gave me a way to 
you know there also needs to be a method to grappling i'm using method very carefully here you know not as a process but you know a, a mental organization how does one for example how does one grapple with say the notion of society of politics of othering with the idea of a raga how does one actually find a way to evolve a conversation right right uh, each one has to find their way and i think the book helped me evolve a conversation right where i could i could see both and i don't need to sit on this side or that side you could see both i could enjoy singing kambodhi and say still kambodhi is a problem right so i think it did help a lot and you know questions of religion were definitely something that were very important to me right because this you know even today people presume that because i'm a carnatic musician they hate me for my political positions now and they think that i should not sing this music because of my political positions i have never figured that out right. actually that's more reflective of the world of carnatic music than me right that so many people within the world of carnatic music expect a certain political social position of the practitioners isn't that ridiculous right right, right. you can you can completely disagree with my politics disagree with my social position we right. will contest it and combat it yeah, it's but like you, the art is different from the artist I, I, that you you're not willing to see that it is possible that the world of carnatic music can have people of diverse political social right. ideas that you believe this world should have only people of certain you know psychological bent of thought or religious so i think th- those are still a problem they are yeah. still a deep problem you know and that, and we have to think about it is is there a vice versa for example do you with your now transformed world view look at those people who accuse of all this and say like oh my god you're still practicing in these so called walls within these so called brahmanical circles i mean do you kind of judge them you know in a way yeah, yeah, i mean pro- we probably do that at times but at the same time i'll just say that i'm still part of that world no you are but i'm right? saying but you're also expanded yourself yes right? no but i'm just saying that i still sing in that world yeah it's i've not said i'll stop singing in that world yeah. you know there are people who have said uh, people from the other side by the way who have said uh, tm krishna slay you know talks about brahmanism about uh, politics why is he singing in sabha i think that's a ridiculous question the point is the engagement that is required right so i will so i don't i don't dissociate myself from those those spaces i think i need to participate in those right. spaces bring to the spaces whatever i believe in right. and let's see what happens and by the way all my colleagues who share the stage with me are not necessarily in the same bandwidth yeah uh, i don't accuse them of or i don't i don't expect them to be no no um i don't uh, disregard them anymore i disregard them now because they don't share I don't. Right. Uh, some of them I can have a conversation with. Some of them we all know right. where the lines are drawn, and we don't have that conversation. Right. I think that is important. Right? Are we judgmental? I guess we too are. But I right. think we have to watch, watch that. I yes. have to watch that too. Right. As much right. because I have made that mistake too. Sometimes judging uh, a person to be very conservative on the basis of how they look, <laughs> I've done it too. Right. And I've learned from it. I've learned from it, and I've felt like a little ant and a small. Piece of piece of whatever uh, mm-hmm. at the end of it, which is I think also mm-hmm. a learning. Right? Yeah, yeah. Now one of the questions I have seen addressed to you a lot, but perhaps is the first time I'm asking you on video, is that does art need to be political? Exactly. For and and I'm only going to talk about Carnatic music because of your profession. A lot of people say to you, see, when Tyagaraja composed the songs, he was only thinking about Lord Rama, and so it's all religious and spiritual. Where is the political dimension in all this? So, I mean, so what is that? Okay, so I'll get to Tyagaraja's second part because I think it's a complicated uh, part of his right. his personality and his music. First, I come from the position that everything is political. Right. Okay. So, if you if you say I've been just singing Carnatic music, I don't speak politics. Does not mean what you're doing is not political. Okay. Now, when I go to a party class, my surroundings. on what stories are told to me what stories are not told to me how they are told to me are all political statements right. they are uh, you know they are kind of culturing me yeah. in a certain manner yeah. even if they themselves do not realize and it it's, it's it's true many people don't realize it yeah. because they have also been habituated in that way from yeah. their gurus yeah. right yeah. so yeah. Uh, we are carrying on the tradition so the world since you asked about carnatic music let's i'll stick to that in the world of carnatic music the entire bubble is a tradition of a bubble right i'm not saying everybody is intentionally doing anything i am i would like to say that we are they are all carrying on without maybe possibly realizing that they are carrying on right 
I grew up in, I went to part of class like everybody else. I learned music from a very traditional person. Sitaram Sharma was a very traditional person. And the stories he told me and the culture of the class, how should the student dress in the class? How should the girl students dress in the class? What is culture? What is music? Therefore, where is Tyagaraja in this conversation? Everything is political, right. which means my entire perception. Now, let's extend this. I am growing in that environment. Then I go to a Sabha, same kind of people. I go to the Sabha canteen, same kind of people. I go to a temple concert, same kind of people. So my whole environment is the same thing. Right. So what is my perception of society? It's based on this experience, perception of politics, right. everything. So my entire world view has its foundational uh, crux in this, right? Right, right? This is utterly political. Okay. Now, the reason we say it's not political is because we believe this is better than political. That's the unsaid statement. I'm not getting that. Okay. okay. The reason why this world or the world of uh, Hindustani music also will never call themselves political is because they believe they are better than the political, meaning they are divine. Okay. Yeah, because I think it's also because when people say political, they explicitly mean things like elections and... No, you know, they, they mean they society. Say, no. Yeah, I don't think people extend politics to... Ex that is one yeah. part, but I also think they don't believe that anything that is connected to faith, to religion can be political. Okay, because you, of the divinity. Uh, so you lift this whole establishment into a plane of an unquestionable. The moment you do that, you're elevating the characters within that space also, right? right? So, therefore, the whole idea that this could be political right. is not there in the consciousness at all. Now, you ask, so therefore, I don't believe this whole idea that the art is ever non-political. It's political because it's saying something, you know. Um, does it need to be political? That question does not even arise for me. Right. But there is another nuance to it. Now, to Tyagaraja, to important question. Now, why did Tyagaraja compose music? Now, this is a very complicated question that I am not willing to just say he was a religious person, he loved Rama, Ra he saw Rama everywhere, he sang. I mean, it's. I think you are completely undermining the individual. There is another problem in this culture, it undermines individuals. Okay. Tyagaraja was a great genius. Right. He was a brain. I mean, he was a man of great thought. He thought of complex ideas. Now, his language and his text will reflect this culture, right? It does not mean there can't be intelligence in that culture, right? Right. So his narrative is around the culture he grew up in, which is to be accepted. And in those days, a larger worldview will be much harder for a person. Let's also be very yeah, because, honest yeah, about it, yeah, right? Yeah. Now, therefore, him singing about Rama is for me completely understandable. No, but don't just say that he's only Rama. Rama is one facet of Tyagaraja. What about the, the complex compositions he's created? Why does he need 24 Sangatis in a composition? Explain it to me. And they're beautifully structured. They're like building blocks. Here is a mind that is like, like, you know, I mean, it's just stunningly. You know, I, I, I get goosebumps. Yeah. I mean, it's, you can cry just for that. You don't have to cry for Rama. You can cry just for that. Yeah. Right? I mean, I'm saying, why reduce that? Now, if you want to believe that Rama gave him the inspiration for that, please do. I'm not going to argue with it about it. Right. I may not think so, but that's my opinion. But he is not just Rama. So is this, this is, and he didn't compose as in terms of Nama Sankirtana or Bhajana. He created a certain set of compositions for that. Right. But the other compositions were done for musical, as a musical endeavor. Right. As a musical chance. He gave you an idea and say, come on, play with it. Right. It's very clear the man is throwing ideas at you and he's throwing ideas through generations. Right. And if you're not going to respect them as intellectual ideas, we are disrespecting that individual. Right. So I'm trying to say, so the intellectual is, is I'm getting that. Where are you transferring the political from there? So his being is a politics. Okay. And so, that's there. And that goes back so to your saying everybody is a political being. So for me, I may dis I disagree with something he said in his compositions. Right. I do have a problem. And I'm not being anachronistic and expecting him to be some modernist in any sure. fashion. But my problem is this. Everybody talks about the, the text of Tyagaraja and say it's so wonderful, you think of Rama. If you're going to do that, let's also talk about the texts that are problematic. Okay. If you don't talk about that, I don't, I will not talk about it. Right. This. So, it needs a complicated perception. Could you... 
talk about one particular bit that you have I a mean, problem with dudu gugala for example okay there is a charnam in which he says uh, i'm paraphrasing i'm not going literal before anybody says yeah, in yeah, the yeah. video that this is not the exact words um teligeni natabita shudrulu vanitalu in that charnam he talks about uh, how he has made the mistake of uh, teaching of uh, sharing this music with uh, peep shudras with uh, women probably uh, specific specifying uh devadasis or or you know or right. people who were considered you know uh, right. lower in perception so in society then he makes a mis- he makes a commentary about himself right now some people say he's not talking about himself he is just using himself as a metaphor for, for human behavior or what i think that's an excuse right. very clearly he's saying that i because you willing to use accept his eyes in other conditions yeah. you are not willing to accept his eye yeah. so now i find that problematic no it creates a little uh, problem right so right. now do i sing that song like right. you know it is a problem it is a, would, would you sing that song i mean i have not i've not resolved it i've not sung it for a long time by the way okay. because i'm unable to resolve it right w- would you be able to see that song from a purely musical perspective is what i'm trying okay, to ask okay now about. that's that's where the other nuance has going to bring now the the issue is i can The question I need to ask myself is it my privilege that is allowing me to do that? Right. That's the difficult question, right? Now, if a woman who understands those lyrics living in 2021 is listening to it or if a person of a different caste who understands listening to it how, how does this affect right that is something I have to ask Bhardwaj. So I can't have this feeling saying i you know at one time i used to say exactly what you asked me said rather that think of it just musically but now i think no i said is it possible to think i mean yeah. yeah i mean i i did try to justify it that way at some point of time but now i think it's a little more complicated because i am not the only one right right and is it it's the privilege that allowing me to say just think of it musically yeah i'm not being affected by yeah. the word right now it's like a, if there was a song that was saying something about black and brown people right that a white person was singing what would you say yeah it's a similar situation isn't it so it is a complicated situation it's not so that the the nuance i wanted to add is also the fact that you need to place yourself in the conversation uh in some manner uh then the politics becomes even more nuanced right so today tm krishna how do you define carnatic music because uh i'm going to give you f- from a film perspective i'm going to take let's say kv mahadevan's Mannavan Vandanadi it's from Thiruvur Chelva yeah, yeah. it's a, it's a pure kalyani or a slightly it's it's a very pure kalyani as well but done in a slightly lighter mood which is Vandal Mahalakshmi mm-hmm. uh, Ile Raja song from Uyandavallam or oh, Sindhane Seemaname Sind- yeah Sindhane Seemaname so many now the raga purity in these songs is 100% mm-hmm. like technically yeah I, i can see you already formulating an answer but i'm <laughs> going to ahead. continue with this question <laughs> go ahead go ahead go ahead can i call this carnatic music very good question i'm also i was also thinking about what i would have said to this question some years ago <laughs> you know i was just smiling actually i don't want to give you a yes no answer to this uh, because there is it's it's i'd like to frame it this way i think there is this idea called raga music that right. we need to understand so what is carnatic music if you want me to define it right. i have now come to this position where i believe there are only three elements to carnatic music okay raga tala slash laya the idea of uh, rhythm, rhythm and time and text and anything we do in carnatic music is a relationship between this three if you take anything compositions improvisation it's a relationship between this three and as long as the three stay honest to the form it is carnatic music okay as far as i'm concerned now if i'm going to hold that where do these songs come now there are two parts now first you can ask the question can you separate this song from the film that's the first question that needs to be asked because i can very easily take it out right. but as a person from the film world it's also a complicated question right. how much of sindhane se mane me is part of the world of that movie yeah right so the the emotive aspect not just lyrical but the even the musical is part of a scene a context the storyline right so can you first remove it that's a tough question okay right. now if i remove it does it allow itself to breathe within these three parameters that i placed if it does i will still call it carnatic okay okay so 
I, I don't see why I should not call it Karnatic. Okay, right. Today, there is also the idea that you could have ragas living in other forms of music. Yeah, right. That, so raga music is a larger pantheon of things, right. which is not doesn't belong to Karnatic or anything. Right. So you could have raga music in film. You could have raga music as long as the notion of the raga of right. a melodic possibility right. is floating around in that being. Right. So these are two things. So technically, I will see that I will see that they are Karnatic. But the question, I can't completely answer it unless I have sung it. Right. Right. So if I sing it and if I'm able to breathe into it the possibilities that this form in these three elements allow. Right. Yes. Because I think, in fact, a lot of the things that we call Carnatic and singing Carnatic music are don't even deserve to be in Carnatic. <laughs> some of these songs are far better than that. Yeah. The Kalyani that you hear in some of these songs are better than some nonsensical Kalyani Kirtanams that we are singing. Right. Right. So, you know, so I would say yes, actually. Yeah, yeah, yes, in yeah. the sense. With a caveat that I need to work with it right. before I do it. But the other question of what happens to the aesthetic body if you remove it from the film is again a tough one. It's a tough question. It's a tough question. Yeah. So again, I'm going to take you back to the TM Krishna of a few years ago, the TM Krishna of a Southern music and even a little while ago, where you had uh, expressed some criticism about Ilai Raja's transposition of, uh, you knew this question was coming, right? Yep, I did. Yeah, so, uh, of Mari Mari Nene from uh, Kamboji to the Ragam Saramati, uh, within the context of the film, w would you say that now that you have, uh, you know, you've done your uh, Chene Porumbok Padal and things like that, would you say that he was doing what you're trying to do now, which is kind of expand the boundaries or borders of Carnatic music or experimenting with it. So, I stand by my criticism of Ilai Raja actually. Yeah. It's not, because fundamentally I think there's only one problem that I have with that. Right. I have the problem that the reverse question of our question of taking a song away from the film happens in this point. Okay. Of we, Tyagaraja's aesthetic body of Mari Marindine in Kamboji is a, is a cohesive body. Right. Right. It's a cohesive body out of which you are saying the lyrical part I'm going to remove right. and give it something else. Right. So I am still uncomfortable with that process of snapping it away okay. in that manner. I still find it problematic. Now, if Tyagara, if if Ilya Raja had had taken, say, for even a even a, say he taken a Tyagaraja Kirtana that we don't know a tune of, right? Hypothetically, I wouldn't make this criticism at all. Right. But the problem is it had a body. So as suppose you made a song, okay as a song, as a text and music together. Right. I just say, I'm going to take the text away, text away from it and do something. In. There's something that is being removed from its cohesiveness. Okay. And that for me is problematic. Right. So in the, yes, you want Carnatic music, if, if suppose you go by your argument that Raja was extending Carnatic music, I think it was still possible for him to do it with some other text. Still possible to, he could use the same Saramati with something else. Right. So, Again, it's not my argument, Krishna. No, I'm no. trying to enter your headspace and I'm asking you questions. <laughs> so, no, but I'm just saying so that I don't, I don't have a problem either way. So let me tell you the way I look at it, right? For me, that particular scene is about this woman proving to this very uh, typical Karna it, yeah. Carnatic singer that, that that for me, the lines that make the song or rather the transposition of Tyagaraja uh, relevant in that song are these lines, Yennamo Ragam, Yennamo Talam, Talayatum Puriya the Kutam. Correct. So whatever song I sing in whatever raga, the the the, the crowd is going to sing, <laughs> is going to treat it in like just keep, oh, it's a great song. Well, that's a keep. political statement. <laughs> I'm telling you. So my point is you could still do that. Right. That's all I'm saying. I agree with the now let's let it look at it from the film angle. Let's right. forget about the musical angle. Right. I think the politics of that scene is brilliant. Right. Actually brilliant. Okay. But I'm saying the same thing could have been done. Without doing this is all I'm saying. Okay. Raja could have done the same thing without having to pick a composition that had its body. Right. But I let me counter argue myself. I could counter argue this by saying, but cinema is a different aesthetic environment. Right. In that aesthetic environment, why are you superimposing a uh, compositional conception? You could counter argue right. with it. But my discomfort comes from the idea of the creator of that form. Right. That's my discomfort. No. And I, but I'm saying, all I'm saying is that the politics of that scene could have still happened with, a, with some other lyrics, with Raja himself writing a Kirtana if he wanted to, right. which was uh, in the same vein. And which he's eminently capable, capable of, of doing. Yeah, it was still possible. Yeah. yeah. Um, it could have been in Telugu too. 
it, you know it, it could have all happened right uh, i just felt i mean it's also possible now that raja did not know there was a kamboji version of that song it's possible yeah I and mean, which i probably overlooked before but it's possible he did yeah yeah Uh, now during the release of southern music uh, uh, the nobel laureate amartya sen was there and one of the things that he said was you know we should try to uh, free classical music from this confines of where it is which is very true because you know like you say you know you say that you should know something to appreciate this music and all that and take it out to the masses now you've been doing your your festivals uh, your uh, your uh, the urur uh, kupam uh, chennai kala chennai kala and all that has that happened krishna have you seen that happening has the so first uh, two things i want to say is that uh, one i think chennai kale terubran urol kot kupum was not just about taking carnatic music somewhere but right. it was also creating a, an environment where multiple art forms could interact which means to people, coexist yeah. coexist yeah so it was not um, i think it was important to say it was not some evangelical project exactly okay? yeah 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 at the same time uh, now this is not something that is going to happen overnight you know people ask okay how many people have come to a concert after i mean how does one gauge these yeah, kind of yeah, movements yeah. you know and i don't even know how to answer this when people ask me i'm not saying you did but i'm saying so but is has there a mean a movement i definitely think there has been a movement right. from the kind of experimentation that i see happening today uh with many younger people right. you know in their own spaces um not just within the carnatic world but within other worlds also right. i think there has been an opening up of this conversation that's the first step right. of experimentations there have been people I can tell you from personal experience there have been people who never go to a carnatic concert landing up at my concert not that they would come back and love it tomorrow but that's the first inter- right. that's the first face off that like, is like happening like see what it's all about yeah okay. i mean a lot of this has happened a porumbokka padal for example i was in a railway station where somebody has tapped me and said neenga thana porumbokka padal paadninga now that's on the very boss right that's begada i mean so there has been movement and i also want to say that i don't need to be responsible for change No you don't I'm just asking No no I'm not saying you yeah, I'm just yeah. saying that it's even better that it doesn't happen because of me right you know yeah it's good yeah, yeah and it's good because it's good because it means that it means that other people probably are doing a better job thinking of more creative ways right. which is fabulous right, right. so I th- I would like to believe and I do believe that in the last 10 years that there has been movement and there has been um greater points of contact of curiosity right um there have been uh, you know people who have learned say carnatic music or something but have been intimidated by this world who have uh, said you know now i i feel more i feel there's a way for me to enter it right right uh, but we there is a lot more to do bharat i mean right. there, there's right. tons more we need to do uh, that i hope we can do i mean we need to create bridges for people who are from marginalized sections of society who want to learn this art form who have no ways of learning this art form the other side we also need to open up the whole idea of the main spaces for multiple art forms right i mean there are, there's a lot to do but i definitely think the conversation today is at a far better place than it was than it was 10 years ago this yeah. conversation was non existent right 10 years ago you know yeah. let's be honest here today it is there even if people are arguing the fact that there is a necessity right uh, to discuss it is a great space there are there are some fa- i think i really believe the next generation will do a better job than us yeah i've always felt that the masses so called masses through the years and through film music have unconsciously been exposed to great varieties of carnatic music yeah. so it's not like that's something that they're completely so that's important point right so a lot of people say oh they already listen now so i'm i'm just taking from what you said now a lot of people say oh but they you know they've already taken in carnatic music but there's a problem there yeah right the form is ha uh, the problem is that one you still don't think they deserve to be part of this world that you just give it in that fashion it's enough that's that's what they will understand that's one so there is still a little screen and othering that is happening the other thing that is important also is to say that this form in its practiced manner is not unreachable for anybody right it's there you know i'm more and more convinced than before now that the thing the reason why these so called classical form with this carnatic hindustani western classic everything are not accessed by people are actually the human beings who practice it it's not the form we have built so many layers of just chatter pure chatter 
that actually so when you you know it's it's we all know it say suppose you're watching you're listening to music the sound is not directly contacting you through the sound is coming all stories so the sound passes the multiple stories in your head space finally reaches you yeah. now if, if the entire section of stories you've created is to scare people away mm. the sound is never heard yeah so thodi begda are not difficult boss it's what you say about thodi begda that is difficult i'm convinced about this more than ever before so the people are obfuscating this whole thing yeah so just remove all this chatter remove all this then slowly i mean the word karnataka sangeetam karnataka is supposed to come from karna ataka that which is pleasing to the ear yeah, boss yeah, yeah. <laughs> now we have made it unpleasant to the world around because of what we have said about it right i'm saying let's stop talking about all this crap can we just make the sound travel now it also means there's another important point i want to say here. as as much as people may access the sound this democratic idea is about people in having people having the right to say i hate it right we have not even given that right it's like this is awful man i don't listen to you sing is a right but we built a culture where we say that nobody has a right to even say that if he said that that guy is some low life that has to change yeah like you almost like you you think you're elevating yourself by saying you like this music exactly the, yeah yeah rubbish i mean it's you think it's great because you 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 are part of it that's all that's right. very normal right. just accept it as normal i mean i mean i learned this the hard way when i started involving myself in multiple cultures things that i thought were crude i thought were were you know simple simplistic raw earthy folk all these are actually abuse words according to me <laughs> they are not complimentary at all you know very raw what does that mean you are actually saying uncultured that's what you're actually saying without saying it raw I would disagree no, because i don't think so I, if i say that i'm reading a book and the emotion hits me in a very raw no, manner no that's very different okay that's very different i agree that's different but when i say you know that dance form is very raw will you look at bharatanatyam and say it's very raw <laughs> okay ha huh. why won't yeah. you say it yeah. that's what i'm talking about right. so i think that i learned that nuance and sophistication you know the is something that belongs to each universe within it right you can't superimpose a notion of sophistication from here to that you can't right so when you when you are part of a listen you know part of a group that is playing bari there is a sophistication that you can only feel within it and that's magic right you know that's as much that gives me as much i cry as much for that that i will cry mm. for singing one of the raja kirtana or anything right yeah, yeah. but it needs yourself you need to put yourself in the position of being vulnerable to experience it yeah. i go back to that first experience i spoke about ultimately that's the connection i'm making now right is that it was it's the same thing and that's the political world view and that's the social world view right now speaking of accessibility uh we just talked about the the urur kupam and all those things now when one of the most important things that you've done i think is your collaborations with perumal murugan uh personally speaking uh i love tamil compositions i don't know a whole lot of telugu so a lot of carnatic music that i've been listening to over the years are simply sounds yeah in a in a nice raga or whatever That's it right, is yeah. so so this is actually something that i can understand the text as well as the lyrics and uh, a song like t for instance mm. it just blows my mind because you are singing it in a keeravani ragam and the text is so you know like like unlike the carnatic yeah, text is, that is, that you usually yeah. uh, somebody else might call it raw or something like exactly, that exactly possible know, yeah ullatti is raw <laughs> <laughs> now how would you call that krishna would you call it carnatic music or would you say let's not define it let's just say it's music beyond boundaries so uh, this i don't believe in this uh, kind of a phrasing because i think it's very uh, which one the music beyond boundaries yeah i think okay. it's a, i i really don't think it's the truth that's okay. why okay okay um it is carnatic music i would like to call okay. it and a carnatic music going back to the three aspects right. of it it is kind of what you said about film music yeah yeah so it has a character within that aesthetic domain it is carnatic music so which is fundamentally why what i'm saying is that the content of the text is not the determinant of the form right which is my argument yeah so what the text is in that relationship is not part of the form right so text can be anything yeah. so you know i let me let me argue one point that uh, some people have raised and well uh, i think it's a valid rare point and i've tried addressing it a few times but never in an interview is in southern music i make this very 
very very strong point that the Krishna, I don't think you make anything but strong points so let's <laughs> let's just cut that out of the thanks <laughs> thanks <laughs> I make this uh, point that the meaning in the word is irrelevant it's the sound of the word that is relevant I make this whole argument on text of saying that in Kar in Carnatic music if the song is about Rama or thing it's not Rama it's Ra and Ma okay okay and it's the sonic meaning right. of the syllable and the consonants like and, yeah if uh, i were listen to a i don't know german song exactly or yeah, i made yeah, that yeah, argument yeah. now somebody could turn around and say you were saying this but why are you change bringing new compositions with different text right. why are you singing porumboku padal and aren't you contradicting yourself right in some manner and i think that's a good argument uh, to to raise i think the answer to that or my answer to that is i i realized very soon after i wrote southern music that that was also an absolute position right that meaning has no space right right and to hold that absolute abstract position you can't hold that position because the way the human species relates to the world is through meaning through vocabulary through uh, semantic meaning so the so i think i started thinking subconsciously about that absolute position of saying Okay I do believe it is sound I'm not disagreeing that there is an abstractness to sound but if I was going to move people beyond say just certain kinds of meanings there needs to be a larger discourse right and that discourse is about multiplicity in meaning right right so that's I moved from that position and said okay one way for people to experience just sound of a text is first for them to experience different meanings in text right so that's when I started talk uh, Try, trying to think about creating compositions uh, in carnatic music that have different textual texture which is dialectic also and had talk about different things even contemporary things mm. and so i don't see it as contradictory mm. i see it as being part of the process of uh, bringing the abstract and the literal into a little more interesting conversation right. and uh, so murugan you know Murugan and my partnership happened by complete accident. We met in Madurai for a public event. We were releasing books, and um, I had never met Murugan, though the controversy of Madhuro Bagan had just probably happened a few months or a year before right. that. And I remember he came into my room, in the hotel, the afternoon, and we just had a chat for ten, fifteen minutes. And then he had this brown envelope, and he said, "I want to give this to you." I said, "Yenna, this is your parangla," and he said. So it was virutams. He had written about forty virutams, okay, and they were all written during the period when he went into his uh, silence of saying right after the, the controversy, the writer is dead, and uh, they were stunning virutams. They were all virutams dedicated to Madhuro Bagan, the Lord, okay, and uh, we said, see if you can sing it. He ticked about ten, which was his favorites. So um, after that, at a concert in Coimbatore. the first time i still remember i sang his virutham and uh, i remember i announced and said uh, this virutham is by permal murugan and there was right through the audience <laughs> so i paused and said yeah the same permal murugan <laughs> and um, so that's when i i realized that murugan was also interested in writing uh, musical form so i actually approached him and said would you be interested in writing kirtanams so he said um, I'd love to. Let's talk. So actually, I went to Namakal, spent a day or couple of days. We just sat and spoke, right, on form, um, on structure, on what, you know what are the liberties that are taken in the Carnatic form, and through those discussions and constant engagements, he made the first set of compositions. And then from then, I only thing I told him is I said write about things that you want to write about, right, uh, and write in the dialects that you write about. I think we also forget that the sound of a word. is also habituated now let's just do this very practically if you look at the number of words we use four languages in carnatic music sanskrit telugu kannada tamil more malayalam a little less so i'm not using it right now how many words in each of these languages do we actually use in the music maybe 150 add their various uh, subdivisions and versions and varieties right maybe 200 words on the whole they are used in different varieties again and again So the entire vocabulary in every language in, in Tamil or Nepali is about what two hundred words plus their varieties in the composition. In 
So the entire, so I'm just, just think of this. So suppose this is being sung for 150 years. Your entire palate is used to only uttering these words or their varieties in the music. Right. 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 Now, if you push this palate, what happens? Right. You don't even know how to utter a, an, within quote, an alien word in this sound. Which is my first struggle to sing Porambok. How do I say Porambok? Porambok. How do I say it? I've never said it musically in right. the Bairi. Right. So people forget that there is this learning also that is happening. Right. Right. When I say Motta Pare, Motta Pare, and I am going to Motta Pare in a Carnatic song. So this is also an interesting learning. Right. Right. On how the dialect, so a word that has never been sung in this environment, when it is suddenly sung, something happens. Right. Right. Uh, which is also an interesting uh, aesthetic and political uh, right and, and i find that the most interesting thing happening because you're also like composing a new repertoire yeah. of music that hopefully will future singers might that's, might, that's might, what might, we hope yeah because otherwise you're stuck with the same nothing wrong with that of yeah. course and they're all great compositions but but i don't know people just sing that bunch and the audience knows that bunch exactly. and then that's it. That's like, and it's almost like there's a little box full with the compositions and nobody's really... Absolutely. Yeah. And I also think that we are stuck in the past. You know, we need, we need ideas. See, I mean, like I said, you, we need ideas. We need ideas that are also today. Right. You know, I, we have this obsession of saying this golden age, golden age, golden yeah, age. I don't know true. what yeah. this golden yeah. age... Yeah. Yeah. Bunkum is. Well, I think I think that's, that's just human nature to kind of look at the past as nostalgic yeah, and wonderful. You yeah, you know, and maybe and, and because of that we don't realize that we burden ourselves. And we actually make ourselves heavier so we can't move. Right. You know, we are you know, we're always looking back and saying, What would Shambhangudi say? What would Tyagaraja say? No, actually you even know? in even in film music, you find so many people, you know, oh the golden age of S D Burman or whatever exactly. it is, and now, or the golden age of Villaraj. I'm like, but there are people making exactly. good music today. Exactly. You know, it's like it's it's not it, you know, just because you like that sound, this is not yeah, an exactly yeah, right. Yeah. So I, we also we need. I feel like we need to engage with today, engage with today's ideas. So I mean, all these, and I I hope that, and you know, in in forms like Carnatic music, usually things come in vogue after about a decade or two after <laughs> they are actually done, or even more. Right. So that's why I started putting it out and saying like, let it stay there. Yeah. You know, because it. And you have the added advantage of video. Yeah, yeah. And you know, and people will pick it up, and I think. Uh, it's, this is part of a longer, longer journey. No, and and, and I think and, it, and speaking of repertoire, it's also getting accomplished writers to create this works. Very that, important, right? You know um, that probably for the first time that you're having a relationship between a writer yeah. and a musician, and a musician, yeah, and uh, a writer who does not belong to this Carnatic world, if yeah. I may specify. And, uh, and and that relationship is creating art. Yeah, yeah. I think we need more of these partnerships. Yeah. I wish other musicians will get such uh, partnerships, you know. Yeah, yeah. And I think then we get we get something quite, the possibilities are quite right, immense. Yeah. I want to talk about Sebastian and Sons. A uh, very, very difficult book to read because it's constantly reminding you of privilege, right? It's, a, it's in that there is this one particular part that, that really is so like like how these the Mridanga makers who work in Brahmin households have uh, removed beef from their cuisine and replaced it with curd and uh, rasam because that's what yeah. that that kind of a thing. So it's almost like the elimination of a sociological, cultural, you know, whatever habit, it is, habit, you know, habit, mm -hmm. and kind of you know getting absorbed into another kind of a thing. Now when you know you. Because one is not aware of this till something like this is brought forth to you in, in, in a book like that, whatever. You know, but it, but it's, it seems so wrong. Yeah. But the point is, Krishna, is it like, do you feel that it's enough to document this or do you need to do something more? That documenting is definitely important no, no, because I, I, that's, the, that's the first step, so, right? So, yeah, I mean, this book was difficult to write for me. Um, it was difficult to write from the fundamental question, um, who am I to write that book? Yeah. Starting from there, right? Uh, but I also realized that this micro world is not something anybody is going to see unless you're part of that world in some fashion, right? right? Um, so I realized that also. Now what actually this whole incident that you talk about came, actually that I remember that conversation so clearly in my head, it happened by accident. Um, there were two Mridanga makers, uh, were making them, showing me how the Murdangam is made. Like we did videos of 
मल्टीपल पार्ट फिट फॉर मी टू अंडरस्टैंड एंड ये दो वेन यू टॉकिंग अबाउट इट सम हाउ फूड केम इन टू द कॉन्वर्जेशन जस्ट बाई एक्सीडेंट एंड वन मेक हाला बीफ साफ सो दैट इमीडिएटली गॉट माई you know thinking i said okay so what is what do you eat what is your what's your cuisine what do you eat for breakfast i'm i'm curious because i i never i don't know right so what do you do about this that's your question right i i mean i think yeah documenting is one but the hope for me is that this book enables voices from the community to come right okay that's why you write a book very honestly right you write this book uh hoping that because of this book a conversation also not within the makers community but also the mridangam player yeah are the younger generation reading this and realizing these nuances right. then is their relationship changing right because you also have that 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 passage where you say that yes we pose for a photo with with the players but we are standing behind them you know so in a way even there there's the hierarchy that's yeah. that's showing through uh, absolutely so yeah. and um that's the hope that somehow this what you're actually doing is you're throwing the spotlight on something and saying through that spotlight can we enable a certain uh, freedom right of thought freedom of relationship that happens now i can definitely say that after sebastian sons came a lot of young mridangam players called me and said thank you for writing the book right because it made me realize so many things yeah. that i never realized before a couple of them also sent a note i think some of them even put posts on facebook saying that you know it's changed that i i'm relooking my at my relationship um mridangam mridangam makers themselves uh, have told me that this book has allowed for the conversation given them the uh, feeling that they can have this conversation right you know, they can they can put forth the conversation the important thing is that now i don't exist in that conversation right that i not part of it yeah. that through a period this enables a far more robust relationship right it may not be clean it may not it may get a little un- uncomfortable people but that's good that's that should happen right but that's what you hope and that's what i hope will happen yeah. and i just want to be an enabler of that uh, beyond this uh, i don't want to be actively uh, participating that's where change can happen can there can it go beyond saying i had tea with my mridangam maker therefore everything is equal in the world yeah. or stuff like that you know like you said the nuances of how people's habits are erased uh, and uh, that's that's pressure and that is cultural pressure and that is occupational pressure and right. caste pressure can we i think that is what i'm hoping right that's what i'm hoping and i i think that even the other day a young uh, singer from i think from the states wrote to me saying thank you for the book i sent it to about 15 of my mridangam playing friends to read uh some people most uh, young musicians i think the younger generation who have read it have come back to me saying yeah it made me pause and think think about so i i think that's where the doing happens right it should make a difference in their lives otherwise you're right so finally krishna has this transforming krishna this tran- or maybe transformed krishna will he still find pleasure or satisfaction in singing the music that he learned as a child as is uh because you've changed a lot your relationship with the music has changed a lot you've gone outside you've stepped outside the boundary so to speak would you find pleasure in singing a traditional uh starting with a even if the varnam is the main piece would you find pleasure in 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 going back to that that traditionally structured concert anymore okay traditionally structured concert no i don't think so okay but all the i mean i still no i, I know you still sing i mean i get yeah, ecstasy yeah. singing tyagaraja and dikshit or even now yeah. i mean i think what really has happened is my whole soundscape has changed which is what how i can explain i'm i'm actually unable to exactly right put words to it i just know i listen differently how's that so i it's like i said it's very hard to explain it's the way i listen to raga i'm talking about Kar- i'm just a carnatic music now right it's like there are far less confines in the way i listen to it okay i'm still okay. not getting it so i'm also trying to explain i'm right. saying i'm able to do it well so i think what has happened in my aesthetic palette is because thankfully because i have allowed myself uh, a constant reflection and absorbing multiple sounds is the notion of rules has changed right okay the notion of 
what's permits, allowed and what's permits, not. Permits, non-permits. That's, I think, kind of okay. changed. Which means that when I sing a raga today, I'm able to absorb it even more as a sonic body rather than the structure that needs to be worked with in any fashion. Right. right? Or uh, by limited by anything of that knowledge. But a raga is a limited thing, Yeah, right? I'm saying it's not limited. What I'm trying to say, if you look at it, I mean, there are no raga is actually exactly how it is being sung, has been sung for the last 100 years. Anybody who says it is lying, it to you, lying to you. A raga has always moved. Right. Right. So these rules have always moved. Right. Now the question is, which rule can be moved? I'm not going to those technicalities. That's very specific. But the fact that the raga breathes, which means that you can that you are actually participating in its movement. Okay. You are not presenting it. I am participating in the movement of that sound body. Right? If you think of a raga like that, then it, it's, then it's like massive. It's like, it's like a huge ocean, right? I mean, I don't, when I think of a raga, I don't think of saying I have to sing this da and that raga, that da is not there and this raga, this phrase. I don't even, that doesn't come into my headspace. Right, right. So in a way, I may, I, I feel that I do sing the compositions from the past, but I know I don't sing it like that. Right. Um, I know that I, people may call them liberties. Fine, call them liberties. Right. I don't care. But I do find a greater expression when I take those liberties. And I believe that the way, I, because I've been also taking in other kind of forms of music and other cultures, that's also given me a perspective to look back at right. my own belong space. Right. In a slightly more, dis, you know, separated fashion. Right. Which, which is, I find freedom in it today. Yeah. I guess, I think what you're saying, if I'm understanding this right, is like, uh, you know, there's this thing called the Great American Songbook, right? Which is this collection of Broadway melodies yeah, from, yeah. you know, whenever they were. And every jazz singer interprets it differently. Like, it's like some phrases are elongated, Correct. some some phrases are compressed. So, if you hear Ella Fitzgerald sing one Correct. of those songs, it, would, it might be very different from Billie Holiday singing the yeah. same song. Is that kind of where you're coming from? I'm not even talking, it's not just interpretation and technicality. That's right. just, that, that's probably always happening. Right. I mean, that's, that's always happening. Right. Uh, that's probably, that's not something new. But I'm just saying, that's what I said, it's very hard for me to actually put a, put, I just put a finger and give you an example. Very difficult for me to say. Maybe you want to sing and say something? Uh, no. I mean, because I'm trying to understand this. Yeah, I think I'm also trying yeah. to explain it to you. But, yeah. <laughs> but I'm just saying that it's slightly more than that. It's slightly more than interpretation. It is not to be uh, confined by even what is traditionally considered its sound. Okay. Okay. So therefore, even if I say this is Raga X and this is the body and these are the forms of it, I'm saying that other than the base form, which we all accept, everything else is out there for the takes. Right? It's not just structural movement. Right. It's also the experience of the raga. Right? You can actually alter that experience. Right. I'm saying, I believe, I, I'm happy to somebody saying that's rubbish, TM Krishna, you don't do any of this, I'm fine to listen to that too. I'm talking about my experience while I sing, is that somewhere, is that the way I hear a Todi or a Kamboji or a Kalyani or a Andhabairvi or a Kedaragoda has, has changed to the point that the sound escapes these structures. So I don't feel limited when I sing anything, in, not in terms of just using a new phrase, but in using a new sound, reinterpreting the way the sound of it needs to be heard. Okay. I don't feel limited. And I didn't learn this only from other cultures. I also learned this from going back into Carnatic music's own history. Right. That also helped me in understanding that the sound also, palette also needs to move. Right. That what is the Carnatic sound today is not what was the Carnatic sound 100 years ago. Right. Right. So if I say, if I say Carnatic music, you are a sound today. I am talking about expanding that. Right. Now that's probably far more specific. Can we expand that palette? For me, the expansion has come from learning from within right. and learning from everywhere. Right. So you're saying that even though, let's say, Raga X, like you said, has a particular series of ascending notes and a particular series of descending notes that define Or X, combinations, specific or combinations. combinations. Or, or certain little phrases that define X, have defined X. And I'm talking about this only because 
you know, when earlier, uh, when people say that we don't know if Tyagaraja really sang this, it was also because a lot of it was not documented. Mm -hmm. Whereas at some point, somebody came, you know, sat down and 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 said, this is the raga and this these are the yeah. descending notes and these are the descending notes and you know, like so. Yeah. So that became the basis for like saying that this is raga X. So I, that was, I think, half truth when people said that. Because well, there is, is that, enough, not, there is enough manuscripts to know how a raga sounded at a certain period of time. Okay. I mean, there's no audio recording, but right. there is a, there is description from okay. which you can kind of kind of. And you're saying it. even from that, it's evolved. Oh, it's completely changed. Okay. Oh, the sound of this Carnatic music that is so old, all that is rubbish. The sound is new. Right. The sound is only what what we think is Carnatic music is about hundred years old. In sound, I'm saying in sound. Right. But Forget about technicalities. In sound. So then you may find what was heard in 1700 awful. You may think that if you heard Tyagaraja sing, you may dislike it. Can okay. you imagine that? <laughs> yeah. So what does that mean? That's the question, right? Right. Right. So imagine if you dislike the way Tyagaraja sang his own composition. It's possible. Right. So because the. the that's a cultural, so it raises this fundamental question, right? So this whole question of what is the form or aesthetic? Is it time bound or are we actually carrying something forward? You know, is there really something you're carrying forward? Right. I think it is the conceptual notions you're carrying forward. Right. Everything else is being built on by time context. So, I keep saying finally, finally, but you just keep building <laughs> on this. So I'm, I'm like, I, I'm finding it very hard to stop. But, but I'm just asking you genuinely, why do we even need a to know what a raga is, if the musician is giving me a, a nice song in a Carnatic, like this, pleasing to my ear, the way you define Carnatic way, why does the raga even matter? So, there are two parts. One is, do you need to know the name of the raga? That is one. Why? I will say no. Okay. But do you need to identify the notion of the raga? Okay. I will say yes. Okay. I'll tell you why. Because it's part. Take take T and Kiravani, the hmm. Permal Murgan song T, and you've sung it in Kiravani. Mm -hmm. Tell me that. With that. So say T Kiravani, right? Now, first of all, a raga by itself is nothing. Now, suppose there are four or five of us in this room. Say all of us don't know Carnatic music at all. Right. I sing raga, Kiravani. Now, I don't care whether you call it Kiravani, Kira, Vendaka, Murugaka. <laughs> it doesn't make a difference. Right. Right. Now, you're just enjoying the sound. Yeah. But you have a notion of the form that you're enjoying. You don't. Right? So, at that point, uh, like Sh Schrodinger's cat almost, Kiravani doesn't exist. Right. Right? Okay. So, you know it doesn't exist. Now, for Kiravani to exist, what needs to happen? You need collective knowledge. Knowledge not in terms of learning the raga, but right. sound. Yeah. So, a collective knowledge, right. a collective historicity, that passes it down through sound and through habit, etc. And a collective emotional bond right. also. It's not just psychological, but there's also the emotive that certain sounds in Kiravani suddenly may go. <gasps> That's that is an emotive connection. Yeah. So Kiravani is born when these parameters of experience are culturally right. habituated in a group. Right. I think you finally explained it. Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah. Correct? Yeah. Now for which you need to be able to associate with the idea. I am not saying you need to know it's Kiravani. But if you don't associate the idea, you still may have a great experience. Right. But you are not experiencing the form actually. Yeah. You are experiencing something and you know how you are experiencing it actually. You are experiencing it based on what you have habituated somewhere else right. that gives you a connection to this. Yeah. I am saying you also need to experience it from within this cultural space. Right. This is true of any other art form, musical form. Right. This is what I would say. So, have you experienced any resistance to uh, some of the things that you've been doing recently? <laughs> well, there has always been resistance to most right. things I've said or done. Uh, some have been overt, some have been, uh, you know, quietly done or being said. Um, yeah, many people believe Carnatic music is perfect. Right. So, why? Why? Reinvent so, the wheel I mean, or whatever. Either yeah. he is the yeah. trying to do it only for his self-promotion or for his own uh, whatever, right. whatever. Um, or that, you know, we should not be singing about these things. Or these ragas don't need to be expanded. You know, what is this experimentation? You know, the, you know he, he, he sings a lot of these phrases that are not by the rules. All these things come in. Uh, but they are only natural. I probably would have made the same accusations if I was on the other side of the aisle. So, I know that also. Right. The, the good thing is I know these arguments, so, so I know I know where they're coming from. I mean, you've been through that and exactly. Then, yeah. So I'm not surprised entirely by them. Sometimes the viciousness gets to you. If there's anything that gets to you, it's the viciousness. But 
well, comes to the territory. Yeah, but I think that's what keeps you interesting, Krishna. And <laughs> always a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you for this interview. Well, thanks, Sudan. Always fun talking to you and I love the questions you ask. Thank you so much. <laughs> thanks very much. Thanks. Hi, I'm TN Krishna. If you enjoyed this conversation, please do subscribe to Film Companion South.